Now there's this grid of nine dots over here, and that tells me what point of the object this is measuring from. So if I click on the top left corner, the X didn't change, but the Y did. If I click on the bottom left corner, again, the X won't change, but the Y will, because that point is further away from the top of the page. If I click in the center, both of them change, because that's where the middle of the object is. Now we've got the width and the height, and it tells me the width is this, and the height is this, and if I wanted to add, and let's just take a silly example, I want to add 1.792 inches just on the right-hand side. How do I do it? In this grid, I anchor the left-hand side by clicking on one of the left points, and then I click after the IN and type plus, and I can't even remember what I said. Let's try 1.792 and then press enter, watch what happens to this rectangle. It expanded by that amount on the right only, and I didn't have to do the maths for it, it figured it out itself. This is very useful. I can do the similar kind of thing over here, I could say plus one, and now it's going to move it one inch to the right, like so. So the control bar can be used for accurately measuring and changing the size and position of objects. You can also use it for scaling. For example, right now, this says it's 100% of its width and 100% of its height. Whatever that width and height happens to be, it's always going to be 100% of it. But if I want to change this to be 50% of it, I can highlight that and type in 50. And these two are linked. This is a link icon. It looks like a chain link. The alternative, if I click on it, is it looks kind of like a beetle. Now, because I clicked on it, it assigned that change and it assigned it to both because that's what the link icon does. If I undo that again, and I'm going to undo this with a really useful keyboard shortcut, Command Z, Command Z, uh, Control Z on a Windows machine, and see that it's linked, and now it's unlinked. Now if it's unlinked, and I change this to 50, and then press Tab, it only changes one of the dimensions. That's the width. I'll undo that again with Command Z. If I've got them linked and I highlight this and say 50%, and I'm going to press Tab to assign it, now it'll do both. There we go. So both the width and height changed, and now it says the width is 100%, the height is 100%. So that can be a little confusing till you get used to it. This field is Rotate, and you can either choose a drop-down number or you can enter your own amount and it'll use that point as the point of rotation. This is skew, and it'll do the same thing. It'll skew it from that point. That point will stay put. You've got rotate 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, flip horizontal, flip vertical. You've got some things over here that we'll get into a little bit later. Here's the fill and the stroke. Now, this is absolutely fundamental. And we've got the fill in the stroke icons down here as well. And we've also got them over here in the swatches window. And here and in the toolbox, you can see one overlaps the other. And what that means is whichever one is overlapping the other, that is the attribute you're working with. Up here in the control bar, they're not overlapped. So you can work with either attribute just by clicking on it. For example, if I want to change the fill color, I click on this arrow. It opens up my swatches window. It's identical to what I've got over here. And whichever color I click on becomes the new fill color for that object. Absolutely fundamental. When you're going to work on an object, check to see whether you're working on its fill or its stroke before you do the wrong thing. This field tells me how wide the stroke attached to an object is. And this tells me the size of the stroke. And this stuff refers to more detailed things, which we'll get onto a bit later. But those are basic object attributes that you can work with using the selected object and the control bar. Next, we're going to have a look at text.